Hello, this is Eric of Not Bios Tech and Reviews, and this is Far in the Future. It is now September 2022, and most of this video was filmed February 2022. The video footage is all chronological order other than this part where we're in the future. You're going to see the walls are different, and the audio probably sounds different as well. I'll be showing the bathroom as the fan is installed right now and the dust gathering and all that fun stuff at the end of this video. But for now, let's get started. Why did I get the Panasonic Whisper Sense bathroom fan? One, it has a humidistat built in. It's automatic if the humidity reaches a certain level. It has a timer you can set on the bathroom fan. So you can set it for how long it wants to run. It has a motion sensor. Don't even need an on off switch because it's all fully automatic. And this is a much better quality one than the other bathroom fan that I reviewed, which was a different brand. I forgot what it was called. Home Works, I believe. Yeah, this one is far better quality. Hello, this is Eric of Not Bios, and today I'm installing the Panasonic FV0511 VQC1. So this is a very silent DC fan. It's rated at 0.3 songs at 80 CFM and 0.8 songs at 110 CFM. This includes a motion sensor and a condensation sensor. So we're gonna see how good or not good this particular one is. So here, it's a Z bracket or something with a template. Nice. It's always a bonus to have a template. And then our fan cover. So right here, and I think this is where the motion sensor goes through, but I haven't installed this before yet, so there's that. And this has these little clips right here that go in the housing. And then we have our lovely manual, which I haven't read through yet. This is the first time ever I've opened this box. And then we have our fan with our dials all right here. 50, 80, and 110 CFM humidity sensing. Sweet. So this actually has a humidistat in it, not just condensation sensing. It also has a timer. Here's our CFM, here's our humidistat, and then right here is our timer. So you can do six inch or four inch to here. This is where your electrical goes through. So if you have one of those plastic devices there, um, I guess they call them 4004s. And then of course, we'll set our switches as we go after. So I'm gonna install this and I'm gonna do it the simplest way. So if that means the bracket here is the simplest way or not, well, I'll find out when I get there. So it wouldn't make this bracket fairly simple. As you can see, it can go right to your wall studs since you have screws on each side. And here normally would go to some other mounting to uh, this won't mount very well to drywall itself, but yeah, we'll see how that works out. And right here that was taped down, this is our motion sensor. So that's pretty sweet. That's gonna go underneath our little plate there so we can actually be seen. Let's say if the motion sensor is too sensitive, you can always try covering a part of this with tape or maybe even a little bit of whiteout on the side, but hopefully it's gonna work for our needs in this particular case. Right now what we see are two different holes. The old ceiling fan is right here, but now I'm putting it over the shower. And I'll show you the hole. I made it bigger on purpose. So since I have drywall, this actually complicates things a little bit. I can't use that uh, Z flex mounting bracket. And I need to leave a gap here with a little gap on this so I can actually uh, put the vent properly into place. So I have right now wood right here and I'm gonna mount the screw holes to the wood. And then I'm gonna use another piece of wood at the front here and then uh, put screws through here or here to give a good bracing. Yeah, so we're gonna be nice and tight here. So to do this install, I'm not using the self-tapping screws. I find they weaken the drill bit, uh, the threads, the threads that actually go into the wood a little too much. So I'm actually gonna use some decent wood screws, not the self-tapping. Now what I've done is I added wood here for reinforcement, so I'm gonna put this in. Now 
Now for the top end, I'm gonna actually attach this wood with drywall screws. And then that's gonna go over top and I'm gonna drill the actual screw holes here. There'll be a little bit of a gap, but that's fine. It's gonna be nice and reinforced and nice and tight. So right now we have four screws here. They're all nice and tight. So this would be sufficient. And when I go in the attic, I can slide this on. And of course the extra gap that you see right here, where you see the little blackness hole through it, is so I can slide this on. Now on the front face, we now have our connection for our electrical inside this little box. Take that off. And we're left here, at least the Canadian and American version. These three wires, the green is always the ground, bare copper. This is supposed to be the neutral, which white normally in Canada and the US is neutral. But your wiring for your house may not be correct. So what do you do if your house wiring is not correct or not sure? If there's power to it, it would actually, the wire itself, you'd hear a buzzing sound. Let me take this socket, for instance, right here. Where there's power, this will make the sound. So this is normally where your common neutral is and you're hot. Hot means there's power to it and that's what the, normally the black wire is. However, Europe, your color codes probably are different. So you may wonder where you put wires through. You'll put wires through this here. So you'll need a flathead or something to actually jam this out. And then you put one of these here. Through this, this is a half inch. So it's commonly referred to as a 4004. So as you can see right here, they're commonly referred to as a 4004. The particular one I have is a box of these. So I'm gonna stick that through the hole and you wanna make sure that your wire can go inwards. So if your connection is like this, it can slide in. So you wanna be able to go in your box and not pull out of the box. So if you're not sure of how to put this, this goes inwards. So we're gonna use the small end right through here. So the wire will slip through here and stay tight, nice and secure where this end right here, this tip that's inside is pushing outwards. So if you were to pull the wire this way, it won't go out of the box and use your non-contact tester to make sure your wires are correctly energized. The easier way to install this is you actually line this up between the studs in your attic. If you have a drywall already there, you're gonna line this up between your studs. These tabs are stick up, they're gonna stay sticking up. Okay, so you're gonna line it up right against your studs. You're not gonna have a gap like this. You're gonna have it tight against each wooden stud where you plan to install it. You might wanna put a small screw through here so it can't open or close and keep it exactly the same. Next, once you have your hole cut, using that cardboard cutout to actually make your hole, and if you watch the rest of the video, you'll learn how to do some of this. You're now gonna put the vent itself, which has a lip, underneath this. Then you can get that big square of the vent fan and stick it up into it. So you're going to stick your fan vent up into it. It's going to be right up here and right up here underneath this here. The reason you're doing it that way and not over top is you want it airtight. You don't want to suck air from your attic. You want to get this against the drywall. So that way, once you have a hole open, you can put the screws in hold your vent onto it screwed into this and then you attach these screws to your studs of your wall and it's nice snug and done properly and of course then you'll be connecting that screw back that holds that front face on and reattaching the power within it so what i installed in the bathroom here is known as a blank face gfi receptacle as you should be able to see on this phone so if i want to turn it off it's off right now and if i want to turn it on I simply power it on and since the bathroom fan is here it'll turn on this fan does have a wrap up so once it senses my motion it turns on automatically so i've been using this since february this is september 2022 and we can see it collected a decent amount of dust so i'm going to give this a quick wash the motion sensor itself clips into here and only run the wires along here it's a bit of a pain because as you pull it off, this thing can slip out. Is the motion sensor a bit of a pain? Yeah, because I have to clip it into place and have to be careful not to let it sag too much or else it'll just come right out. It's a very good quality. It's working great so far still. It's of course been since February to now and the cold does not cause a problem with this. Unlike the cheaper Homeworks fan that would get really loud, the motor would get really loud on that one, but this one 
It seems to work well even despite the cold. It reached about negative 25, negative 30-ish here. So it was working fine. So that is good. So cleaning this unit was a bit of a pain because the dust really did stick. So using garden hose or something with a bit of pressure would be a good idea. So I don't know if we can see it, but I have a little bit of white out right in the corner, right up there and get one side at least in so I can hopefully do this without hopefully too many problems because this is a bit snug, this cable. More snug than I prefer. I don't even, I don't even run the cable along this tray because it's just too tight for my liking and I'm too high up. Now if I had a stool or something that to raise my level, I guess I could do that simple enough, but no, I'm not going to. And let's get that water off that outside. And now the fan is ready to use. So the Panasonic WhisperSense fan seems to be quite good quality, not a problem so far. I purchased it back in February and it's now September 7th, no problems yet. A little bit of dust build up. It's a little louder than I would like, but uh, it's manageable. Four inch venting is what I used. Now, is there anything else to note? Hmm. Well, it is quite sensitive, so you may need to cover just a part of that motion sensor with a liquid whiteout, which is what I did just on the corner, just a little bit, if it's turning on when you're out of the room. For some people that has been the experience as I've seen other people note that on reviews. When it comes to installed, this is a little bit more difficult I find than some other fans I've installed. The Z bracket could be useful if you install the right way. So my idea is you have the Z bracket, you install everything just underneath it so it's all facing against the drywall and you screw in the sides. It's not gonna be like tight to the drywall, but if you can figure out where your holes are, you can drill say a couple holes from the drywall using drywall screws up to the drywall through the Z bracket to give a little more reinforcement other than the sides. And of course, cut out your lines using the template that's included in the box to cut your hole. This is Erica, not BIOS. I hope you enjoyed this install and quick review of the Panasonic WhisperSense bathroom fan. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Not BIOS Tech and Hardware and, well, Not BIOS Tech and Reviews now, and help this channel grow. And also, have yourselves a most wonderful day.